Good morning, SM. Hope you all are having a great day. On today's show, we have a news segment with James, an entertainment segment with Andrew, a sports update with Mason, and a weather report with Vivian. Let's get this show on the road. What's up, Eagles? I am Tyson Dose. And I'm Wyatt Trombino. Hey Tyson, do you know anything that has been going on in the world lately? You know what well, I haven't, but good thing we have James informing us on what has been going on. Take it away, James. Thanks Tyson and Wyatt, and hello SM, I'm James Oliva, and today I'm going to be starting off with some sad news. The war in Israel continues with airstrikes on Gaza. The Israel Defense Forces say that a Hamas commander was successfully killed during the airstrike. The Hamas commander was responsible for some of the October 7th raids, where over a thousand people died and more were taken hostage. Yesterday was an airstrike on a refugee camp in Gaza. A warning was sent out online to the residents, but it is unknown whether they received the message or not and made it to safety. On a lighter note, news from Tesla says that the long-awaited cy Cybertruck is to be released in early 2025. After a few wait, many buyers are sadly waiting for its release. That's it for today, SM. I'm James Oliva, and thanks for listening. Sending it back over to Tyson and Wyatt. There really are many things going on in the world. You sure are right, Wyatt. There are so many things to do and wish for. You know what I wish, Wyatt? What do you wish for, Tyson? I wish I was 16 so I could drive already. Do you even know how to use a car or to pump gas? I don't know how to, but Brayden does. Oh, he does? Run it. Hello, my name is Brayden Mort, and today I'm doing how to pump your gas. Step one is to put your credit card in and authorize the payment. Step two is to remove the gas cap. Step three, select the grade of gasoline and insert the nozzle into the car. We're doing premium. Step four is to once the desired amount of gas is reached, remove the nozzle and put back into the machine. Step five is to either say yes or no to your receipt and collect it. Step six is to replace the gas cap and uh, close the gas blade. And these are the successful steps to pump your gas. Thank you for watching. Now I know at least one thing to do when I get a call. That was helpful, but I want to learn about something a little more entertaining. You know what is entertainment, Wyatt? What? Entertainment. Do you even know anything entertaining that's happening? Actually, a little bit, but not as much as Andrew. So should we let him take it away? Yeah, all you, Andrew. Good morning, and welcome to Entertainment with me, Andrew Martone. Starting off with something extra fun, books. Some top reads right now include The Last Resort, written by Marissa Stapley, The House We Grew Up In by Lisa Jewell, and Dark Places by Gillian Flynn. Moving on, if you feel like watching a movie, check out The Hunger Games, The Battle of Songbirds and Snakes, or Five Nights at Freddy's. The Hunger Games, The Battle of Songbirds and Snakes, is a prequel to The Hunger Games trilogy that provides a backstory for the villain of the trilogy, President Snow, while Five Nights at Freddy's is a popular recreation of the popular video game of the same name. Finally, if you feel like just relaxing at home and watching TV, I definitely recommend the show Survivor. Survivor is a show where 18 people are left on an island and have to rely on one another to survive, but every three days they have to vote someone off the island. That's all I have for you today. I'm Andrew Martone, staying back for Wyatt and Tyson. Are you entertained now? I actually am, and know what to look out for. Hey Wyatt, kind of off topic, but do you know what's going on in the clause? Obviously not. I know nothing about it. Do you even know how to play? No, and stop acting like you know how. At least Liv can teach us to catch and pass. That would be helpful. What is that of? 
Hi, I'm Liz Donaldson, and this is how to pass and catch with a lacrosse stick. The first skill we're going to be learning is how to catch. When you're catching, you want to watch the ball as it's coming towards you and slowly bring it back. Charlotte is going to be the first person to catch. Raquel's gonna try. Oh, let's go! Oh, nice. <laughs> the next skill that you're gonna be learning is how to pass. The first thing you wanna do when passing is knowing if you're a lefty or a righty. Then you're gonna step with your opposite foot, bring the stick back, and follow through. The first person to pass is Charlotte. Now it's Raquel's turn. The first challenge is Charlotte and Raquel are going to be running across the field and they're going to have to try to catch the ball as they're running. The second challenge is they're both going to be standing at one line and try to throw the ball as far as they can. The person who throws the ball the farthest wins. That was quite inter interesting, but it's not my favorite sport. Oh yeah? What is your favorite sport? Then? I'm more of a football guy. I actually know a guy who can tell us everything in the sports world. I think I do too, Mason. Wait. You read my mind. Take it away, Mason. What's up, Eagles? I'm Mason Shaw, and I'm here oh. to bring you the latest sports updates. Starting off, former college wrestler Spencer Lee was at the Bill Farrell 2023 Olympic Trials, where he proceeded to get first place in the 50 selling kilogram with a 125 pound weight class. Make sure to keep an eye out for him on the Summer Olympics in April. Moving on to college football, the four teams making it to the playoffs this 2023 season are the Michigan Wolverines, the Washington Huskies, the Texas Longhorns, and Alabama. There's been lots of controversy surrounding who made it to the Final Four. Undefeated Florida State University did not make it. This is the first time ever that an undefeated Power 5 school did not make the Final Four. This is because Florida State's quarterback had a season-ending leg injury a couple of weeks ago, and people don't think he, the team is the same without him. That's all I have for you today, Eagles. This has been your sports update with Mason Shaw sending it back to Wyatt and Tyson. It's just crazy all the things sports players can do. All the challenges and hardships they go through. We actually have a heartbreaking human interest story our class made coming up next. That's why is that? This July, my father, Scott Casanova, achieved a lifetime goal of summiting the peak of Mount Whitney, the highest mountain in the continental United States, despite treacherous conditions. He is here with us today to tell us what led to his decision to climb, how he prepared, and finally how he achieved this goal despite countless hurdles. Mount Whitney has an elevation of 14,505 feet. Was this your first attempt at such a challenging climb at such a high altitude? So in order to climb Mount Whitney, you have to apply for a permit with the federal park system. And three years ago, five friends and I put in for permits and I was fortunate enough to get drawn. And we trained very hard and put a lot of planning. Actually, we had guys coming as far away from Hawaii to do that climb. And unfortunately, the night before the climb, there was a lightning strike in the portal and it caused a 3,000 acre forest fire and we were unable to climb Mount Whitney that, that time. We did climb Mount Langley, which is a mountain that's 14,000 feet just to the south of Whitney, but it's not Mount Whitney. It's not the highest peak in the lower 48. Most people would have checked that climb off their bucket list after being shut down. Why did you decide to give it another go? You know, it, it, it's the highest peak in the lower 48 it's just always been a bucket list item for me. It's something I've always wanted to do. And I was gonna keep applying for the permit and, until we were able to successfully climb. How old were you when you climbed Mount Whitney? 47 years old, and it was this past July. Wow, you are no screen chicken. How did you prepare to climb and make sure that you were up to the physical task? 
I was running about three miles a day during the week and I was doing long runs anywhere from eight to 10 miles on the weekends. And then also doing some interval weight training and some hikes with weighted backpacks on the weekends as well. We had a great deal of rain this past year. How did that impact the conditions of the mountain? Yes, the, the lower Sierras where Mount Whitney is located received more than 800 inches of snow, which is more snow than the Sierras have received in the last 100 years. So it was a record year. And even in July, the entire mountain was covered in snow. So it made the climb much different and much more treacherous than it normally would be that, for that time of year. I understand you reached a sort of impasse prior to reaching the summit, where you could have chosen to turn around. What made you keep going? So at 12,000 feet, which is where our base camp is located, there was a very steep ice chute that we had to choose if we were going to climb or not. Actually, three of the men in our party out of the six of us decided they weren't going to attempt that climb. And the other three of us decided we, we really wanted to make a go of it. And so we got up at 3.30 the following morning and with headlamps and ice axe and crampon, we, we climbed up that ice chute that was about a half mile long. How did it feel to finally reach the summit? It was awe-inspiring. It was um, very emotional to achieve something that was almost three years in the making and required a lot of planning and a lot of training. And it was also very inspiring just to see God's creation from that high where you can see hundreds of miles and everywhere you look is just, you know, the beauty of what God created. It's very emotional. I heard your trip down was filled with excitement. Can you tell us a little bit about what happened? So like I said, the snow created very treacherous conditions on the mountain that were unlike you would normally see that time of year. Coming down the mountain, we had to glissade with our ice axes, which is basically sliding down a very deep uh, slope on the mountain. Unfortunately, I slid into an ice chute and was going about 30 miles per hour before I could get my ice axe to catch onto the side of the mountain. And when it finally caught, I was going so quick, it actually ripped my arm out of socket. And um, it was a, a very scary situation where it looked like I was going to collide into a rock wall when at the last minute I was able to kick out of the ice chute and um, just missed that rock wall by about 10 feet. How has this whole experience impacted you? And when do you think, what do you think your next adventure will be? I think it has shown me that if you set your mind on something and you really want to achieve something, no matter what obstacles are in the way, or if, if God throws a forest fire at you or 800 inches of snow, if you um, really just go one step at a time, and keep moving forward towards your goal, anything's possible. Do you have any words of wisdom to someone who is working towards a goal but is faced with adversity? I would say don't quit. Keep, keep moving forward. Uh, the great Dr. Martin Luther King once said, if you can't fly, run. If you can't run, walk. If you can't walk, crawl. Just keep moving forward no matter what. And whatever your goal is, keep moving forward towards that goal. Thank you for the time to share your story. Hopefully you will inspire someone listening. Kudos for facing and conquering that hard challenge. Yeah, but I'm still stuck on sports. Let's go play football outside. I would if I knew the weather. Vivian could tell you right now. Take it away, Vivian. Hey Eagles, I'm Vivian Taylor and I'm here to bring you the weather for this week. It looks like it's going to be partially cloudy.